Friday the 13th, 2013. And I think I've mentioned before on Friday the 13th that uh, that was actually a lucky day for me. Back in the day, I won a, I won the, won the Teenage World's Fair at the Cow Palace on a Friday the 13th, I believe. If it wasn't that battle, it was one of the other big battle of the bands back when I was a teenager. So I've always looked at that day as a lucky day instead of an unlucky day. So hopefully it's a lucky day for everybody out there. So what did we do this week? Well, we continue on with the Harmony course, uh, and it, it was step 14 of the Harmony course, and it is talking about or addressing your ability to hold on to the fifth. So in the last few clips in relationship to the Harmony course, it's been first building your ability to all of the intervals, 12 intervals ascending, 12 intervals descending, going from that to learning how to hear and identify a major chord, hold on to the root while the third and fifth are played against you, then the same thing, holding on to the third while the root and the fifth are played against you. And in this week's clip, it's hearing the root and the third and you holding and singing the fifth against those intervals. Then, What's coming next? Well, you'll have to wait and see till next week and you'll see. But it's growing and we're heading towards that day where after I do all of this prep work, I can finally get you guys to really start to sing melody lines and harmonize them. And it's not just that I want to teach you how to sing harmony in that way. Of course, you'll learn how to be able to spontaneously come up with your harmonies. But I want to teach you and train you to understand the different ways that you use harmony and the different styles of vocal harmony. And so that's what I'm really excited to get to, but we have to do this basic work because you have to just learn how to hold your part. That's the most important thing in the beginning. Once you can hold your part, then the world of harmony opens up to you in so many incredible musical styles and directions we can go into that will help every single person out there because you're going to be able to develop your own harmony parts. You're going to be able to sing with another singer and sort of spontaneously throw in the harmony, even if you were at a karaoke bar and doing it. So hang in there because uh, that's where we're heading. Uh, first, to learn how to hold all your parts and understand basic harmony. Go from there into what's called parallel harmony, and then from parallel harmony into two, uh, uh, three part harmony with two supporting one those types of things into barbershop harmony that are four parts and all kinds of different styles of music use it to sky's the limit where you can do six parts and understand how to make all of that work and not be busy at the same time or you can develop your own background vocals in a recording project you can sing in a band you can be a backup vocalist you can be a lead you'll be a way better lead vocalist from doing all of this so it all starts by doing the basics that we're doing now. And now for the musical tip. Well, anybody that's been following along on either the forum or the last few news wrap-ups knows that I've been addressing the problem of vibrato for one of our students online, John, who's in the UK, and uh, I'm going to continue to do that. Now, just to qualify what's going on at this point in time via the forum, I gave John some suggestions about, uh, and John, I gave you these suggestions about ways of sort of looking at your problem and uh, talked about tension and so forth. And you came back with the question about where vibrato is housed in relationship to your range. And if you're doing it wrong because you're having a problem uh, of, with the pressures that are higher up. And I want to redefine that question and say this about that question. So instead of saying, are you doing it wrong up because you feel tension up in your higher notes when you're trying to produce vibrato than you do with your lower notes, instead of asking me if you're doing it wrong, I would rather restate the question and say, how do I develop my vibrato in my mix? What do I do in my mix where the pressure is increased? So let me start there about the pressure being increased and really understanding what's going on again. Now, again, I have to capsulate things. There's much more in-depth information on the site about these different things as far as singing through your registers. But let me capsulate. 
We have a chest, a mix, and the head. Understand that the air pressure in your, the buildup of air pressure underneath your vocal cords in your chest voice, the buildup of air pressure underneath your vocal cords in your mix and in your head voice feels different. You have less tension. Now, I always try to explain to students in the beginning that it goes from loose to tight, then you make an adjustment into your mix and it goes from loose again to tight. You make adjustment again, it goes from loose again to tight in your head voice. But you know what? The pressures do feel different and you've got to understand that. I want to say one more thing about that. That's how it goes ascending. Loose to tight, loose to tight. I want to address that more in a minute here. And loose to tight. So when you come back down, well, if you're at the top of your head voice, it's going from tight to looser to tight. And that's a big problem with a lot of people because what happens with many is they'll go from tight to loose to loose and sort of skip the whole part of their mix and drop right down in their chest, especially in male adjustment. And so you have to understand what it feels like to smoothly move both ascending in what you have to do and descending in what you have to do. So there's all kinds of exercises that I could use and I do with the student in my studio to slowly progress them through to something, feel what it feels like with that trick sound and then go from that into vocalizing the various vowel combinations. But to do something quick like this on the news tip here, I love using the siren as the example. And again, we can use sirens both ascending and descending. Now, what I mean about loose to tight and tight to loose, if we start again from the bottom, if I'm in my chest, I'm going, mm, that's kind of from the bottom of my chest voice up to kind of the top of my chest voice. And there's mm, kind of loose pressure there with a balanced larynx. Mm, when I get to about there, I'm kind of at the top of my chest voice and I had to make a slight uh, variation in the adjustment of even that, but from here, mm, in that area, that is my mix area. And the air pressure does feel different here. Mm, and mm, it definitely is building up in a different way, and I have to be able to handle this mm, with a little bit different approach and acceptance of the pressure building up more in that area of my uh, vocal cords. So your question about tension, there is going to be a little bit more tension if I go Ooh, and let my vibrato come into here, or if I go Ooh, and let my vibrato come into here, because now I'm dealing with vibrato and the tension that my vocal cord is at at that area. Ooh, that is very different than Ooh. When I say very different, for me, it's different, and I understand that, but for me, it feels, it all feels connected, and it's not harder to do it in my uh, mix area than it is in my chest voice area, but I do know that I'm doing something different and handling the air pressure. So for you to answer your question is, it's okay to have a little bit more tension up there in your mix, you have to have tension in your mix to be in your mix. That's where the air pressure builds up the most, not in your head voice. Now, in head voice, if I let that vibrato come in there, honestly, that feels even easier to me than the other two places to bring it in. I'm in a looser part of my voice, less air pressure is building up into my head voice. Now, if you have a problem getting into your head voice and that's something else that has to be addressed, then we might have to fix that before you feel comfortable about letting your vibrato happen up in your head voice. But truly, where the hardest place to have vibrato, and it isn't that hard, but the place where you would feel the most tension is in the high part of your mix because that's where the most tension builds up when you're pulling up into mix and the cords are stretching and thinning out, and you're simultaneously bringing your vibrato in. It's not that hard, but it is different. So what can we do? What can you do this week to help you? I believe that, again, the approach for you is to keep on working on you sort of getting your technique together better and understand how getting your technique together will help your overall vibrato everywhere. 
If you're having success with vibrato more in your chest voice, that is normal, makes all the sense to me in the world, and you should continue to work on that. Even those exercises where I had you shake a little bit, like if you come up and go, Ooh. Now you'll hear on the internet that those types of exercises are not that good because they're manipulations. Well, I understand they're in a manip manipulation, but at the same time, lots of times, and I've worked with many students, it will kickstart somebody who has a problem just to sort of get that pulsating feeling. The truth is the truth, and the truth is when the technique is right and everything is balanced the right way, your vibrato starts to come in automatically from the tremor of the whole voice box moving from the balanced balanced uh, approach of the air pressure coming through the cords. But if there's too much pro if there's a problem there, then it's it's a cause and effect and it goes right down the line. So some of these kickstart things do work, but you have to balance the cords. So I'm looking for balance here. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to sing in your chest voice uh, on a low comfortable note and just go Ooh, and see if you can just do that for a moment. It's not addressing balancing out and mix yet, but just going in chest and see if you can do that comfortably. And again, you need consistent airflow. Ooh, if your air is too hard or if you're pressing too much pressure, trying to sing too loud or too hard, it's going to be a problem. Get a good constant airflow. Ooh, back off just a little at the end and sometimes the vibrato starts to come in and usually a little easier on the low notes. And try some of the kick starts down on the low note again just to try to kick things in there. Now that doesn't solve your mix problem but it means that you're still working on your vibrato. Again, I'm going to go, ooh, that's a C sharp, I think. Right, yeah. Ooh, now that's just a comfortable note for me. Ooh, and it's kind of even top, almost chesty here. I could take it a little higher now. Ooh, and then my vibrato will come in for me. Ooh, and what does that feel like? It feels different than the lower notes. It's all about just getting into your mix the right way. So rather your vibrato's coming into that or not, get up to that note with a consistent airflow. Ooh. And if there's no vibrato, that's okay. Let it be straight. Ooh. Take a full breath, raise the chest, uh, keep the chest up, but take the low breath, let the air come up, let the intercostals uh, expand a little bit, so from the bottom to the top, take the breath. Go ooh, in your mix area, ooh, and still hold that note, and then ease off to it, ease off from it, decrescendo just a little bit, get quieter. Ooh, and just by backing off, just like going, eh, it may come in. Ooh, ooh. Now, I know that I'm small and stringent. I can certainly make that bigger. Ooh, I can bring that power in there, but I'm asking you to come up a little more gentle, not breathy, not unsupported, but ooh, and then just get lighter. Ooh, hear, hear what happened? My chords broke right there. I got lighter but without support, and that's what happens. Now if I go, ooh, I got a little lighter but I kept my support up. I'm keeping the chest up, I'm keeping the air in me. Ooh, it starts to work. Ooh, see what that feels like that way. Or, ooh, and then go. just sort of kicks in. What am I doing different? I'm taking some of the ideas that are already on the website between 1 and 10, applying them to different parts of my range. So if I'm applying, I could apply that same idea to a lower note. Ooh, and get gentle. And actually I think that you'll find that your vibrato would kick in easier down there with the low note than it will here. Ooh, 
but don't feel it's wrong because the tension is a little bit more there. You're just dealing with the tension in that area of your range where your mix is at and the chords are a little thinner and it's always going to feel that way. It's the difference is if you feel secure about controlling that or you feel like you can't even get there. So you want to work on mix ideas. And G. Get up to the note. Let the note come in. Let the note come in down on the bottom. And as redundant as this may sound, John, still check yourself here. Make sure that the muscles underneath the tongue are all relaxed. Nothing's pushing down or feels tight in there. It just feels loose. Touch your Adam's apple and make sure that's there. Feel what that feels like there. Feel what it feels like down in the lower area of your, lower area of your range. And you just pick up some random note. See what it feels like up on your upper notes. And that, I'm producing vibrato in specifically three different places in my range and the air pressure does feel different. So the original question of if I'm feeling tension when I'm up in my higher notes in my mix, am I doing it wrong? Is if it's controlled and you're balancing and you know what it really feels like to be in your mix, which is more air pressure buildup than the other two places in your range, you're not doing it wrong. You just have to get better at that control and it's a little harder to learn it there. But when your voice is completely balanced from the bottom to the top of your range, the volumes are balanced and your resonance is working from bottom to top and you're getting good chord closure, the chords are closing the way they should, when all of those things are happening and balanced, then you know what it feels like to be in the three places of your range, you've got a consistent sound throughout your range, and you have to work on singing in those three different places, letting your vibrato come in and out, and that's a good thing to practice, to actually practice feeling it in the different parts of your range. Getting control over that will be making you a lot better singer. So John, I want you to think about that. I do believe that your problem lies in the fact of too much tension and not a good balance between your registers. That's probably what's going on really for your vibrato problem. And once that's truly straightened out, uh, it's going to feel a lot easier for that to come in. I want you to still have a little tenacity with the course and uh, work on those courses. Even go to the refinement, which is past the uh, 10 and look a little bit more at the refinement exercises even if you don't feel like you are ready for that because everything is a, a progress and you might work on that a little bit and then go back and work on all, all of the various different ends between uh, 1 and 10. Uh, also I love the fact of you sharing with me the types of music that you're singing uh, and just for everybody else that's watching this you sent me a list of singers. Uh, you said it was for, kind of 40s and 50s Sinatra, which is, you know, <laughs> I can relate to that. And Slim Whitman, Jim Reeves, The Bachelors, Hank Williams, Tony Bennett, Dean Martin, uh, Del Shannon, uh, Neil Sedaka, Ray Charles. So, uh, wow, you are definitely old school singer. You're singing some of the old classic guys, you know, and those are good singers to listen to. The fact that you're doing Neil Sedaka also must mean that your range is pretty good right now to get up there and sing some of uh, his tunes. Now, for everybody watching, even, those, even though I just named old school singers, when it comes to talking about technique, this, these techniques will work if we're talking about Justin Timberlake or if we're talking about Tony Bennett, if we're talking about Michael Blue Blay or if we're talking about Frank Sinatra. You know, so anyway, it is my drive and passion to continue to bring all of the information that I know in a very organized way onto TotallyVocals.com so you will have an incredible reference, a place to go where it's like going to the library of voice and access all of these different directions from voice. We have beginning, intermediate, advanced courses, a course on vibrato, a course on jazz scat singing, a listen and recognize course to train your ears, 
a harmony course that I'm working on right now that will that has start for the very basics if you don't know anything at all about harmony and it isn't just book learning harmony it isn't talking about just the things that you find in a harmony book it's real world application of using the right vocal techniques as you're learning to sing harmony that's the only way you're ever going to truly become a great vocalist it's in the doing you have to do you are what you do so if you run around the track all day long you get big calves you sit in a chair all day long guess what gets big so we are what we do you want to be a better singer sing but sing correctly learn about harmony learn about all the proper techniques sing through your ranges these are all important totallyvocals.com <laughs>